All right, guys, what time is it? Ooh, that's loud, huh? All right, what time is it? Preach the word. Now we've been learning about knowing God. Okay, that's what life is about, us knowing God. And so I've tried to emphasize to you guys, or I've uh, reminded you, from the Catechism, question nine says, who is God? You guys remember the answer? Who is God? God is a spirit and does not have a body like men. So can you see God? No. no. And that's why the Bible says, John 1, 18, no one has ever seen God. Okay? No one has ever seen God. And so because God is so much greater than us, we can't see him, it, it becomes really hard for us to be able to know him and, and, and get to know him. And so God had to stoop down to our level. So we can understand things about God. We can't understand Him fully, but we can understand things about God. And so, you guys remember what He's done to reveal Himself to us? You guys remember the word? Anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphisms. That's when, when we speak of God with human characteristics. And guys, I, I want to reiterate again and again. If I just talk about God and, and uh, make Him like a human, make Him like me, that's idolatry. It's serious sin, okay? But for God to speak of himself and human characteristics, because that's what we can understand. Guys, that's gracious revelation. And that's what we're looking at. Now, I want you guys to understand something. And that is, this is really important. As we're looking through these anthropomorphisms, okay? And I can't really say it, but you can understand. That's impressive. But as we're looking at these, it's really important to understand. Is God a big man up in heaven? No, so don't misunderstand. He's not some big man. Okay, we looked at his face, his eyes. No, but God uses these uh, things to help us to understand who He is better. Now, we, in John 18, it goes on to say nobody's ever seen God, but what? The only God who is at the Father's side—that's Jesus. He has made Him known. So Jesus, in, in a way, is the ultimate anthropomorphism. God, the Son, became a man. So that's why Philip said to Jesus, Jesus, show us the Father. Show us God. And what did Jesus say? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so uh, the incarnation, guys, is the ultimate uh, anthropomorphism. Now, what we're going to look at today, guess what body part we're going to look at today? Oh, you can't really see it. Can you tell what that is? No. It's a nose. And it's actually a really cute nose. It's kind of like that one right there. It's really cute, okay? It doesn't show up real good there, but... Um, we're going to look at the nose. Now, a nose is actually more important than you would think, okay, to, to even how we look. Okay, I found this site that has <laughs> celebrities, but without their nose. I'm hoping you know one of those, either Mike Tyson or Clint Eastwood or Barack Obama. But you just take somebody's nose off, it really changes what they look like, doesn't it? Yeah. Huh? If I was really good, I'd pick, take pictures of you guys and Photoshop your noses out, but I'm not that good. But the point is, guys, is... The, what I want you to see is the nose is really more important than we think. Okay, and the Bible talks about the nose. So let's go right, right up to it. Um, in Exodus, this is right after God had parted the Red Sea and saved Israel and destroyed the Egyptians. Okay, and so Moses is singing a song. It's called Moses' song. He's, he pray, I'll sing praises to the, the Lord because He has triumphed gloriously. He says in verse seven, "In the greatness of Your Majesty." You overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. Now, here it is right here. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. Now, we need to understand, guys, the parting of the Red Sea. We've probably all heard this story many, many times. And, and we, need to, we need to understand how intense it was for a minute. So let me quick paint the picture, guys. Understand, the Israelites, they had just seen the ten plagues, and the last one was where all the firstborn of the Egyptians died. The firstborn kids, the firstborn cattle, all of them. And so the Egyptians gave Israel their stuff and said, you leave, get, get out. And so they left. Did they have weapons? They didn't have weapons. There were probably maybe as many as like 2 million people. Can they travel fast? Lots of women in No. So they're going out in the wilderness. Okay? And of course, we sang earlier about the, the, the cloud and the pillar. Okay? The pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud. And, and God's how God led them. It was a pillar of cloud, pillar of fire. And he leads them right up to the Red Sea. 
Okay, so they came, and so just imagine you're looking at the sea. You, you can't hardly see it, it's miles across it. Okay? And guys, understand, like, if you read books or something, like, the sea is intense. This is why the sea often symbolizes God's judgment. But, like, I just read Moby Dick not that long ago. And there's intense chapters about fighting, the sailors fighting the sea. If you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, that's same shit. But if you have, okay? The point is, there's lots of stories about the sea and, and how intense it is, how hard it is. And so the sea, guys, is what they're looking at. And of course, we all know what happened, who came behind them, who changed their mind? The Egyptians, the most powerful army in the world at the time. Hundreds, thousands of chariots coming after Israel, okay? Was that a, did that seem like a hopeless situation? It did. And so, so, in fact, they even said to Moses, why'd you bring us here? Was there not enough graves in Egypt? And they thought they were going to die. And so, of course, God had Moses take his staff. He struck the Red Sea. And guys, imagine. Okay, The Bible says the winds came. We don't know how long it took. Could have been minutes. Could have been, could have been hours. But the winds start coming. Can you imagine these fierce, hard winds? And the whole sea starts to split on both sides. Can you imagine how intense that would be? It's likely, you know, most of our story, Bible story books and stuff, puts it in the daytime, but it was most likely nighttime, okay? Here's a, here's a, could you imagine looking down that, okay? And it's, I think, I don't know if the lightning was there, it doesn't say, but the point is, this is an intense time. Water's going, and guys, if you go in there, if anything happens, I mean, you got anything to protect you? Nothing. You're a very vulnerable person if you go into there. Can you imagine like having to decide between the Egyptians killing you or or going through that. That's why the Bible, Hebrews 11 says, by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea. It wasn't easy. And so they went through it. Of course, they went on dry land. They didn't get mud on their shoes. Okay? It's a miracle. Okay, and Of course, they got, as they get, were getting close to the other side, the Egyptians, of course, they came in, and their chariots are going crazy and all this kind of stuff. So they end up, at some point, they start realizing this isn't what we should do. So they turn around, go away, and what God destroys the whole army. Okay. Israel is saved on the other side. I picture, this is just gas, it doesn't say, but I picture, can you imagine now the sea calm? Completely calm. They have just seen this intense miracle that destroyed their enemies and saved them. Can you imagine the wonder and awe that they're feeling? Looking at this sea where they were just saved, and it's in that context that, that they say, what, at the blast of your nostrils, the water's piled up. I mean, guys, look at me. Look at the blast of your not. Be careful with that one. Okay? <laughs> okay? Uh, but guys, he just, just breathed out with his nose. Is that an intense thing? You see how this is showing the power of God? That this amazing feat, this amazing redemption, this thing that was so scary, they probably wouldn't have even wanted to go through. And, and they said, it's the last of his nostrils. That's why a couple verses later they say, who is like you, O oh Lord? What's the answer? No one. No one's like you. Who is like you? Majestic in holiness. Awesome in glorious deeds. Doing wonders. So guys, they were amazed. And we see the power of God. And Moses uh, uh, demonstrates it in an amazing way. Just saying, it was just the blast of his nostrils. And it was An amazing demonstration of his power. We'll just say that. All right. Now, here's the thing. It's involved in all that. Guess what else there was? Not just his power, but there's the understanding of anger. Was God angry with the Egyptians? He was. And look at that. Psalm 18 says that smoke went up from his nostrils. Let's talk about God. Okay? And again, does God have nostrils? Does God have a nose? Okay, so it's helping it. It's helping teach it. Smoke went up from his nostrils, a devouring fire from his mouth, glowing coals uh, flamed forth from him. And I think you're kind of seeing the picture of somebody, imagine somebody get mad. Did, they, did their nostrils flare? Huh? Try to, sometime later on, try to just look in the mirror and look at your nose when you get mad. Okay? Now understand, guys, does God get angry? Yes. Now, does God have a temper tantrum like you or maybe your mom or dad? We all do at times. 
Our anger is sinful. Is God's anger ever sinful? No. But the Bible says God is angry. There's a good sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. You should read it when you get older. But the point is, guys, this is picturing and showing God's anger toward, toward sin. Okay? Toward the wicked. Okay? And so I think we can kind of see this idea. Okay? Uh, listen to this. This is going to blow you away. You guys will love this. Uh, when David went down to visit the, the army of Israel and Goliath was coming out and, and blaspheming God, David said, ah, he says, you shouldn't do that. Well, Eliab, his older brother, saw David. And so Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And it says, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Okay? Now, you guys have brothers and sisters? Most of you? you ever, does your anger ever get kindled towards your brother and sister? Yeah, you know what it's like. So Eliab, he's probably a little jealous here. But literally, in the Hebrew, you know what that says? Eliab's nose got hot toward David. So what it says, literally, in the Hebrew, it's a, it's a metaphor. His nose got hot. Feel your nose. Okay? And so, in other words, your nose getting hot was a, 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 a metaphor for, for anger being kindled up. Okay? Um, and it's used about God, too. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land. You see that? God, because of uh, Israel's idolatry, his nose was hot against this land. That's what it says. His nose was hot against this land, bringing upon it all the curses written in the book. And that was in the chapter before. It says the Lord uprooted them from their land in anger. Okay? That's literally in nose. Okay? And, oops. And fury, sorry, and fury, that's hot, in hot. Now, I think we can understand anger being associated with heat, can't we? What do we call somebody who gets mad all the time real quick? Hot head, hot head. So we're just transferring it to one part. We would say now it's a hot nose, okay? So you guys ever, you ever, you ever your nose ever get heated toward your siblings? Yeah, I think so, okay? So God here, because of their sin, his nose is hot. And he, before he judges sin. Now, this is what I want you guys to say. What is the most famous nose in our culture? Most famous nose. Whose is it? Nobody knows? Adults. Huh? Pinocchio! Huh? And the book's way better. Okay? But, Pinocchio, guys, his, when he lied, his nose would get longer, at least in the movie, okay? So you should read the book. But here's the thing. Our culture associates, like if I said that businessman had a, had a long nose, like would you want to do business with him? You'd probably think he's a liar, huh? Okay? And so our idea of a long nose is associated with somebody who lies, okay? But that's just because of a book written in the 1880s, okay? Well, the Bible was written way before the 1880s, okay? And so their idea of a long nose is not the same, Okay? For my name's sake, Isaiah, this is God speaking, and Isaiah, for my name's sake, I defer my anger. For the sake of my praise, I restrain it for you that I may not cut you off. What, literally, what he's saying right there is he says, for my name's sake, I make my nose long. I make my <coughs> nose long. That's what he's, That literally is what it says. Okay? Come back to Exodus 34. This is what he says. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. This is God describing who he is. And look, notice the first two things. He's merciful and gracious. You like that? Amen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the last two, he's what? Step, full of steadfast love and faithfulness. He's, he's reliable. He's, we can trust him. You like that? Okay. Amen. And right in the middle, it says what? Slow and to anger, okay? You know what that literally is? He's long-nosed. Long-nosed. I like the King James because it kind of gets it without, we don't understand the nose. He's long-suffering. That in our sin, rather than giving us what we deserve right away, he suffers long. The picture I get is this. Imagine like the Looney Tunes character. I don't know if this is good, but that helps me. Imagine the Looney Tunes character and you can see the steam building up, building up, building up before it comes on. Now, the danger in that, guys, is God doesn't have temper tantrums, okay? But, guys, eventually God's wrath comes out and he judges sin, okay? And the good news for us, 
because he's long nosed. He suffers long with our sin before he judges us, which gives us opportunity to trust in him. So let's pray and thank God the things that we can learn even about his nose and that the fact that he's, he's long nose before he judges sin. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for your mercy, your long suffering. Lord, help us to be reminded to love you more and more because of your slowness to anger. We recognize you will judge sin, uh, that you hate sin, and it will be dealt with, and we praise you for that. So help us to trust in Jesus uh, so that uh, we can uh, know you and walk with you and, uh, and be, be safe through your judgment as Israel was. And, uh, and so help us with that, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.